and to know that I wanted to trade against the greatest trader of all time, Nancy Pelosi. What's going on, guys? It's Ricky, and quickly wanted to recap the day. So in today's earlier video, I talked about NVIDIA, how it was overbought, and how I was setting up for my short position. I wanted to recap the overall day and pretty much just show you that I still do not think that my idea of preparing for a short on NVIDIA was wrong, just that direction was not in my favor. And I think it was very clear um, that direction was bullish and it had to do with uh, the overall job reports that we received today. A big concern as of last week because of Friday uh, were that uh, the concern of job reports uh, this upcoming week when it came down to what was actually shared uh, during the pre-market session um, really sent the market into a nice little bull rally and it I, I thought because of what we experienced right at market open where we pulled on back and that was very similar uh, to the day before where we gapped up and then we pulled on back. Um, I thought we were going to get a very similar setup and I was wrong, right? I'm not here to pretend like I'm perfect. I've expressed it even in today's earlier video where I, I knew that I could be wrong. Uh, I expressed that I entered with a very small position um, and what I was waiting for and that I would only add more if direction became favorable. Direction never became favorable. And one thing that really saved me from adding too heavy to my short position too early on is right? I opened up a short position originally as we were approaching previous resistance levels, and that was right around uh, 102.80. Um, the thing about that is we finally broke back below that EMA and began to indicate signs of a pullback, but that was on the one minute time frame. And let me get a show of hands of how many people over trade when you trade off of the one minute. So one thing that because of that little fake out, I was only in with 200 shares. So if you know anything about with the dollar amount that I trade with, I trade with a little bit over half a million dollars. So my full invested position size would be roughly right around 4,800 to about 5,000 shares. 200 shares is a, about a 5% position size. And I know I'm saying these numbers and you might be like, Ricky, why do I care? Position size is super important because you could be wrong, but because you're so lightly invested in a trade, you could be wrong and easily tolerate that red day. Um, just like today, I pulled on back, I entered my short, I thought I had signs of confirmation, and then it quickly began to indicate signs of an uptrend and it was still bullish. So instead of just trading off of the one minute where multiple times we broke below the EMA, we broke below the EMA, we broke below the EMA. There are many times that we broke below the EMA, but it wasn't actively selling off. And this can often lead to over trading. So one thing that I shared with my LPP team is instead of trading off of the one minute time frame, I began focusing on the five minute time frame. Still the same length for my EMA, which is anywhere from around 40 EMA to 50 EMA. You could see that from other than the initial drop from when we recovered, we never actually broke below the EMA until we got into market close. And then it actively sold off and it broke below uh, 104, right? For a short period of time, I talked to my LPP team, I added more to my short position then, and then I quickly had to cover because it was showing signs of a reversal. But the really beautiful thing about that is that, I mean, was today a killer day for me? No, not necessarily, right? But one of the things that I wanted to make sure that I expressed is, it wasn't a horrible day. And the reason that I didn't put myself in a super tough spot is because I was able to understand and respect that although I really wanted to short NVIDIA because of how overbought I saw it to be and how much pullback potential I thought there was going to be, the opportunity never presented itself. And by focusing on the five minute time frame, I avoided Many times where on the one minute, I could have added multiple times when it broke below the EMA, but then that would have led to fake outs and impulsive trading and over trading, where just by focusing on the five minute, I would have clearly seen that there was not once that we actively broke below the EMA, not until power hour, which is the last hour of the market close, where we actively broke below the EMA, we sold off to lows of 103.66, and then quickly began to recover. At that point, I closed out my short position. I then went long because I saw that there was so much momentum for the bulls. I accepted that I was wrong with the idea that 
direction just was not in my favor. And although I was wrong in wanting to short NVIDIA, and it was a desire of mine is because of yesterday's performance, I saw it to be a very easy opportunity where if it's set up exactly like it did yesterday, we have a lot of downside potential. But guess what? Some days it works, some days it doesn't. Some days I dance with the market and some days I step on the market's toes. And the, that analogy that I'm trying to give you is just to kind of put into perspective where you could be wrong, but as long as you're wrong in a very small way because you give the position a very small position size, it makes it much more enjoyable. So one thing that I recapped the overall day with the LPP team was today was not a grand slam for me by any means, right? But it also wasn't a horrible day. And it was all because I waited and I waited and I waited for an opportunity to present itself that just never did. And then when it did, it was a quick fake out. And then I quickly was able to close and then just accepted that the day was bullish. And based off of what we saw yesterday, where we were red and we sold off into the aftermarket trading session, I figured that we were green and we we're going to rally into the aftermarket trading session. And that's exactly what I ended up doing with NVIDIA. As you could see, I ended up closing my entire trade and then it ended slightly in the green. So very happy with how the day played out. But again, Yes, I was wrong in wanting to force a short with NVIDIA. Do I think that my idea was wrong, that NVIDIA is at a resistance here, that it's not at a resistance? I still think it's at a resistance. It's just there was no progress on the downside, and I needed to accept that. And um, yeah, I mean, that's all I really wanted to recap with you guys um, on, the, on the one hour and on the four hour time frame. It looks like we are at a critical range, just like we talked about a few days ago, where we could also look at the NASDAQ market and we are testing a potential reversal. So for all those that have been waiting for the markets to potentially recover, we might be in the early stages. I think tomorrow will kind of dictate, okay, are we finally going to begin to recover and show signs of higher highs? Or are we going to get rejected again at this EMA and continue to sell off? So again, it's important to pay attention to the intraday opportunities, but it's also important to kind of take a step back, look at those larger time frames, and ask yourself, what is the market going to do, not just tomorrow, but maybe for the next few days? And I think when you look at those larger time frames, it's a little bit easier to see the bigger picture. So I hope that this recap was somewhat useful for you, especially uh, for those that are just getting started. I don't ever expect you guys... Um, or I don't ever want you guys to believe that I expect all of my trades to be perfect, especially if you're part of my LPP team. You guys have seen me trade live before. You've seen me make mistakes. And even in today's live trading session, a lot of the feedback that I got was that I was really patient with the opportunity that I was waiting for. And although I wasn't forcing trades and taking multiple trades throughout the day, the idea of just waiting and waiting and waiting was a, was a lesson learned from them because they under they now understand the importance of truly waiting for confirmation of an opportunity to present itself. And if I never got that confirmation to add more to my position, then that's a lesson within itself, right? Of It pays to be patient in this market. And if your criteria isn't met, then don't force the trade and don't take it. So very excited to follow up. Um, I hope that I earned your thumbs up um, and I hope to see you in tomorrow's live trading session. I appreciate your time. Like always, let's make sure that we end the year on a green note. Take care team.